We're going to look at John chapter 5, and we're going to look at how Jesus is greater than anything and everything. Number one, he's greater than death. In John 5, 1 through 3, it says, After this there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there was at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. So you have all of these men who feel like death, sitting around a pool which has five porches. Not only does the number five represent grace in the Bible, it also represents death. A man was smote under the fifth rib. David gathered five smooth stones before he killed Goliath. Satan falls five times. His name has five letters. Death has five letters. So these men who feel like death are waiting for the moving of the water. And one of them is about to find out that Jesus is greater than death, and he is greater than all your sickness and sin. Now verse 3, In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. So these men having the worst pool party in history definitely have some problems. They are impotent folk. They have no power. Just like you, before you were saved, you had no power. Ephesians 2.12 says we were without hope and without God in the world before we were saved. And these men by the pool are also blind. Before you were saved, you were blind spiritually. Lost men everywhere have their minds blinded. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So these men by the pool are also halt. They can't hardly walk, just like the song says, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. We can't walk without Jesus Christ. They are withered. The way of a transgressor is hard, according to Proverbs thirteen fifteen. But once you get saved and in the book, walk in the Spirit, then your leaf won't wither. Psalms 1, 1 through 3 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Now let's look at verse 3 again. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. So an angel comes down and messes with the water, and when you hear someone teach or preach on this, they don't magnify the strangeness of the verse. You have an angel coming down and doing something to the water, and it seems the people know about it and see it. So it seems another purpose for angels is messing with waters on this earth. In Revelation 16:4, it says, And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. So you have something with angels messing around with waters in the Bible. And the fact that the men know an angel is doing something to the water shows that during that time God was using signs because 1 Corinthians one twenty two says the Jews require a sign. Okay, now back to verse 3. And these lay a great multitude of impotent folk of blind, halt, and withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water, Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. So Jesus is better than your disease. And if you're lost, you have the worst disease of all, a sin disease. And once you tra take a drink of the living water, once you get in the living water, which is Jesus Christ, then you'll be made whole. Something about water in the Bible is that it's connected with life. Genesis 1.20 said, And God said, Let the waters 
bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly upon the earth in the open firmament of heaven. So, you see, water in the Bible has a connection to life, and Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and he is called that living water. Now, verse 5 and 6, And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie, and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? Notice that the Lord will help a man who's been sick for a long time. And I've seen God save men and women in their seventies. This man has had an infirmity thirty and eight years, and maybe you're sixty years old, and you have lived for the devil your whole life. Maybe your body bears the marks of a sinful lifestyle. Maybe you have STDs and tattoos over every inch and piercings and a smoker's voice, and your body is worn down from drugs and alcohol. That would it stop the Lord from saving you and giving his living water to you. He says to the man, Wilt thou be made whole? Uh, as Jesus came to you and knocked on your heart's door and said, Would you like to be saved? Will you be saved? Will you believe on me? John 6, 37 says, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. God will take anybody. He'll take an outcast. He'll take the people that people hate. He came to save sinners, the worst of sinners. Uh, you've not done a sin that would make Jesus not save you. But next we see Jesus is greater than your obstacles. In verse 7, it says, The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus saith unto him, Arise, take up thy bed and walk. Notice he says, I have no man to put me into the pool. The same goes for you and your salvation. No man can help you but the Lord Jesus Christ. And while the man is get going into the pool, another person was stepping in before him. He had his obstacles. Maybe you have obstacles keeping you from the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe there are people in the way for you as well. Maybe you're worried about what your wife will think if you get saved and begin to live for the Lord. You're worried if you get saved and then begin to live for God afterwards that you won't be able to watch Netflix with your wife anymore. You won't be able to drink with her anymore. You won't be able to cuss together anymore. Maybe you're worried because you're living with your girlfriend and if you get saved then you'll have to kick her out or something. But you're worried about your works. You're making it about you. The Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Once you get saved, God will help you have victory over your sin. It's not connected with your works. But there are obstacles the devil uses to keep you from getting in the water. But the Lord is greater than your obstacles. And you'll find that if you just go ahead and get in the water and don't let anyone hold you back, that everything will work out just fine. And if you get saved, you can claim the verse that says, If God be for me, who can be against me? And anyone who looks down on you for getting in the water isn't worth the trouble anyway. But next, Jesus is greater than religion. And he's greater than your religion if you're in a false religion. John 5, 9 says, And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed and walked, and on the same day was the Sabbath. Now notice the man was made whole. He was able to get up and walk. And Romans 6, 4 says, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. See, when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, your body dies, but your spirit is made alive. That's why you're a walking dead man. There's something in you that's alive, but you're walking around in a rotting corpse. John 5.10 says, The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. The moment you get saved, you're going to have these cults and religious Pharisees trying to discourage you in your Christian walk. They're attacking him just as he is starting on that Christian walk. This is what will happen. The moment the devil sees you walking with the Lord, he will put one of his minions in front of you to stunt your spiritual growth. But Jesus Christ is greater than these religious hypocrites. John 5.11 says, He answered them, this is the man that was cured, 
He that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. Notice he cares about what the Lord said, and a babe in Christ cares about what thus saith the Lord. It is the religious hypocrites that try to hold you back and make you doubt what the Lord has told you to do. Now John five twelve and 13 says, Then asked they him, What man is that which said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? And he that was healed wist not who it was. For Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. So you see, when you're a babe in Christ, when you first get saved, you don't know too much about the Lord other than that he saved you, just like this guy. But he's concerned with what the Lord told him to do. He's choosing what the Lord said over religious tradition. And the Lord makes it where you have to study to get to know him and fellowship with him and prayer to really get to know him. Notice it says, for Jesus had conveyed himself away. Uh, God's made it to where you got to get in the book and find, find out about him. But if you draw not to God, then he will draw not to you. So that's what the man did. Look in verse 14. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. So he was seeking the face of the Lord. And the Lord came to him and said, Sin no more. And once you get saved, the Lord will begin to knock the sin off of you if you let him. He wants to mold you into someone who desires to live holy. He wants you to quit your sin after you're saved. Not to get saved or stay saved, but he wants you to quit your sin and live for him. He says, Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. Now John 5.15, The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. Now the man who was healed, he goes to tell them all about who it was that healed him. Just like when you get saved and you learn more about the Lord and his word, then you can go tell others about him. Memorize the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, so you can tell other people. Memorize the Romans road. Memorize verses to show a man he's a sinner. Memorize verses that show eternal punishment for sin. See, when you get saved, you don't know too much then you got to get in the book and you'll be able to answer all the questions that people throw your way. John 5.16 says, And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. So you see, these wicked Pharisees were more concerned about defending their belief than they were about the fact a person just got healed. And I know people who would get mad if their kid was saved at another church besides theirs. I know people who would get mad if their kid got saved under a preacher they didn't like, maybe because he believes a little bit different. But you're in a mess. You are a mess when you care about defending your belief, your little minor doctrinal, doctrinal differences you have with people. If you care more about those things than another person, about another person getting saved and believing in the gospel, then your priorities are not in line. But this has been part of John chapter 5. And if you've made it this far and you're not saved, it's simple to be saved. Paul gives us the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. He says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. So Jesus Christ died for your sins. He died by shedding his blood. He was buried and rose again the third day. And if you come to him as the guilty sinner that you are and believe on him and him alone, then you can be saved and have eternal life. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Acts 16.31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Romans 4.5 says, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. It's your faith that gets you righteousness, your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Not any good things you do, not water baptism, not living a good life. It's coming to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner and putting your trust in Him and what He did on the cross to be your payment for sin. Only then can you have eternal life and go to heaven.